We have located the lighthouse at the top corner of this right triangle. The question notes that the lighthouse is three kilometers away from the nearest point P. So we have labeled a point P at the bottom left corner of this right triangle and the distance between the lighthouse and point P is three kilometers. The question notes that the light from the lighthouse makes four revolutions per minute. So we have to imagine that at the lighthouse, it's projecting some light and it's spinning around, let's say, in a sort of counterclockwise direction, and it's spinning at a rate of four revolutions per minute. So we've labeled an angle up here in the upper corner of the triangle, and what this means is that that angle is changing at the rate of four revolutions per minute. And because that is a rate, we're going to use derivative notation. So in other words, we're saying that the rate of change in the angle is equal to four revolutions per minute. We can say four revolutions per one minute. The challenge right now is to get this into the standard unit of radians per minute, and that's a relatively easy task because we hopefully know that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And so if we set up this little conversion factor, the revolutions are going to cancel out. We multiply the four times the two pi, and we end up with eight pi radians per minute. So that's going to be the standard value of our d theta dt. That's again, the rate of change in this angle as the lighthouse is spinning around in a counterclockwise fashion. So we have that value right here. The next challenge is to come up with an adequate equation. There's a couple of options here, but the option that might be the path of least resistance is going to be the tangent function. So take a look at the right triangle, and we know that the tangent of that angle theta will equal the opposite over the adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So if we go opposite to theta, we see that the side is marked x, and then the adjacent side, adjacent to that angle, is 3. And so we can actually rewrite the right-hand side a little bit because it's going to make taking the derivative easier. Instead of x over 3, we're just going to call that 1 third x. So there's our equation. And after establishing that equation, we need to differentiate it. We need to take the derivative with respect to time. So that's our next task. Now, we hopefully know that the derivative of tangent of theta is secant squared of theta. But because we're differentiating with respect to time, we have to apply the chain rule, and we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just theta. We have to multiply by the derivative of that inside function with respect to time. So that just means we have to multiply by d theta dt. So that would be the complete derivative of tangent of theta with respect to time. The other side, we also have to differentiate with respect to time. Now we all know that when we do the derivative of 1 third x, we just have 1 third. But again, we're differentiating with respect to time. So you can think of the x as being in its own little set of parentheses here. And we have to, according to the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of that variable with respect to time. So that would be dx dt. There we have it. And now we want to figure out what we're actually trying to solve for here. So we'll go back and it says, how fast is the beam of light moving along the shoreline when it is one kilometer from p? So you can imagine it. A particular moment in time, the light is beaming out from the lighthouse right to this spot here. And at that moment, that beam of light is traveling horizontally in this direction. And so our job is to find how fast that beam of light is moving along the shoreline when it is one kilometer from point P. So we have to express that in symbolic notation. How fast? How fast indicates a rate. Again, we're trying to figure out how fast that beam of light is moving horizontally. We can see that that horizontal distance is labeled x, and again, it is a rate. So we have to use derivative notation for rates. That question is asking us to find dx dt. That's what we're looking for in this question. So we're going to go back to our equation below, and we're going to solve it for dx dt. We can do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3 because then three times one third is just one. So you're left with one dx dt, or just dx dt. So here is the equation we need, and we can see that in order for us to solve this, we need a couple of values. We need d theta dt, but we have that. We figured that out above. That was eight pi radians per minute. So we're okay there. But what we need is the secant squared of theta. And so let's talk about that for a moment. We probably learned in a pre-calculus class 
a certain trigonometric identity of sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. And we probably have also learned that if you divide each term of that identity by cosine squared of theta, then you can get a new identity. So sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is just one. And then one over cosine squared theta is secant squared of theta. And this is nice, isn't it? Because secant squared of theta is part of our original equation over there. We can see from this identity that secant squared of theta can be substituted with tangent squared plus one. And it turns out to be a convenient substitution. So that's what we're gonna do next, is we're gonna do three times, and we're gonna substitute secant squared of theta with tangent squared of theta plus one. And then this is still times d theta dt. Now the reason we do that is because we can go back to our triangle, and we know that at the moment in time that the question is asking us about that the light is one kilometer from point P. So in other words, X is equal to one kilometer. Now look at that right triangle again. You can see now that the tangent of our angle theta is equal to the opposite side, which would be one kilometer, divided by the adjacent side, which would be three kilometers. So in other words, tangent of theta in this moment of time is equal to one third. And that is why we made that little trig identity replacement, because this tangent of theta is going to be replaced with one third. Now let's not forget though, it's tangent squared. So it's actually going to become one third squared plus one like this. And then times d theta dt, we might as well substitute in d theta dt, which we discovered earlier was eight pi radians per minute. We'll just call it eight pi. We'll omit the units for the moment for clarity, and then we'll figure out what the units are momentarily. So now it's just a matter of simplifying this. We have one third squared, which is one ninth. One ninth plus one is gonna be 10 ninths times this eight pi. And now we just have to multiply all the numerators together. So three, 10, and eight along with the pi. So that's gonna give us 240 pi and then it's over nine. And we can probably reduce that. 240 pi over nine. If we divide the top and bottom by three, we'll get 80 pi over three, and this is our dx dt. Now it's time to go back and just make sure we have the right unit. So we know that we have x divided by t. We know that x, which was a distance, was measured in kilometers, and then time was measured in minutes. So we have 80 pi over three kilometers per minute. For those who are interested, 80 pi divided by three is about 83.8. So it's traveling at a rate of about 83.8 kilometers per minute during that moment of time. So either one of these would be the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But if not, of course, no worries. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.